with many priests. Comrade Ntombi, you know many of my priests. We were sharing uh, during COVID-19, we were burying many of our comrades. We shared many stages with some of them. From all those days, we used to read the Bible very well. When the children of Israel, for instance, were leaving Egypt to the promised land, there were many problems. Because at some point, oh, food is my love. My commissar, yeah, you won't find this girl, man. When they were going to the promised land, at some point, some of them betrayed God. God punished them. Yes, when they betrayed God, He punished them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He created many problems for them so that they can listen to Him. At that time, the great leader Moses, before he died, he handed over to Joshua. Later on, to Gideon and others. So we come from there. We know these things. So what I'm simply saying is that judges are not God. Their word is not final. We are not against the judiciary. We agree with Commissioner Mbusi that we must transform the judiciary to become people's judiciary and ultimately to become revolutionary judiciary. Because in that case, we will not have said with this murderous criminal for a long time without taking appropriate action. But the action that we have taken as the Communist Party on behalf of the Alliance, as well as on behalf of the Ani family, we are acting together in unison in this regard. <laughs> Was to look at the legal avenues available to us. We have yesterday served legal papers to the Constitutional Court to call for a decision order on their decision to release Janus Walus. We hope they will not apply the blind law of justice. We appreciate and believe in the blind lady of justice, but not the blind law. There's a huge difference between this. In other words, when we read the judgment to start with, it indicates what Walut sought to do and his co-conspirator, who then affirmed, because his co-conspirator Clive W. Lewis, after he was released on medical parole, because we also opposed most of his applications, when he was released on medical parole, he made a, a video, a documentary, where he said this documentary must be released after his death. And it was released indeed after his death. We asked Minister Lamola about this, what he intends to do about it, and what are our rights in that respect. In a formal meeting, when we held a meeting with him in consultation on this matter, I'll talk this in a brief moment. We then said, this, 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 uh, W. Lewis then said they killed Chris Arnie because he was a communist and he was too influential and that the ANC could not control him. I don't want to be controlled by the ANC. I will not be allow, I will not allow the communist party to be controlled by the ANC. The SNCP is in alliance with the, with the ANC. It's not the ANC to control the Communist Party. So they say Christian was uncontrollable and was most popular after Mandela and too powerful for transformation of this country. This is W. Lewis. So on that basis, they don't consider this fact. They don't even affirm our rights as communists. For all I care, the Constitutional Court had put me on the hanger at, by right-wingers to finish me off because I'm a communist. And yet, they protect a murderous criminal, a right-wing fascist, Janus Walus. This is the essence of our disregard that they did not listen even to our own application, the Ani family and the SACP. We had indicated, comrades, when we went to the appeals court and the constitutional court that one we refused Janus Walus to get parole because he did not tell the truth and this is the reason why the TRC did not grant him together with Clive W. Lewis amnesty because they failed to tell the truth and the TRC was presided by bishops they refused. When we say, if they don't tell the truth, 
We will never forgive them. We are condemned as if we are evil. And yet the bishops who presided over the TRC and refused to grant amnesty are let scot free. Why? Why selective justice? We don't want selective justice in this country. We want justice for all, justice for everyone, but not justice, even we have given justice to criminals in this country, but not unfair justice to criminals and against the We said, Janus Walus did not show any remorse. We came here uh, in this place for the parole here in one day with Ausdin Po and her daughter Lindy and the Communist Party. That was the first time that Lindy Wei met these people, the murderers of her father, for the first time at close range in that form. And in that day, Ausdin Po said to them, if you want to talk to me, here are my lawyers. His lawyers were there. And we were having our lawyers. Advocate Malinde at the time, who's now a judge. And I must also use this opportunity to thank him very much, Advocate Malindi and Advocate, uh, Attorney Tanya Nkopani. They gave us marvelous service comrades for more than 20 years, free of charge in many instances. At, at any point where we have to pay was because they needed to pay a junior counsel or this and that, but also at some point, this is no comrade, here is something. But for more than two decades, they represented the Communist Party and the Hani family free of charge. <laughs> and ultimately, to the Constitutional Court, our own advocate, Comrade Moses Kakani, advocate Moses Kakani, who also represented us pro bono, free of charge. comrade, <laughs> if we were not having appropriate legal services over the years. So, he never showed remorse. That day, in this place, Koshmampur, for the parole board hearing, he then said, we said to him, if the house depot said, if you want to talk to us, here are my lawyers. Talk to them, communicate with them, we'll start a process. They never did that. Until some years later, when she was at the memorial site, at the cemetery on the 10th of April. She spoke there again and said, these people, even up to today, have not apologized. She was speaking the truth. They have never apologized. After that, a few days later, she left to Cuba. Then they called us and said, we want us to import, we want to give you a letter to communicate with the attorneys. We said, we know where our attorneys are. They use that, that, that only that information to put it in the parole system that they've written the letter to us and to Ausdimpo. Ausdimpo has never received a letter from Janus Waluch. Never. There's never been victim offender dialogue in this instance. Therefore, the parole condition, the parole act itself has been violated, now violated by the Constitutional Court. What do we do in this instance? When there's such gross error at that level, so we have then decided, comrades, that we are taking the rescission order. The rescission order is to ask them to reverse this decision. Secondly, we have served papers yesterday to Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, Comrade Lamula, to say to him, he must stay execution of this order pending the outcome of the rescission hearing by the Constitutional Court. But something is happening because the right-wingers are at work. Since yesterday, they've been refusing to accept our documents. Today, our lawyers, who have also volunteered on this, on this case, led by Advocate Tibena, of course working with our legal team of long-standing, are forced now to go and deliver this thing in a dehumanizing manner to the offices of Janus Walus lawyers. We have said they must do it to comply because they are just simply saying they are refusing to accept the email uh, already because we have served in the court. They said, they told the Constitutional Court Administration, let them come to us and drop the, the, the documents here because they've got our address. That's how condescending they still are, the right wing in this country.
and the law is protecting them. Any revolution, comrades, let me outline this fundamental statement. Any revolution that does not dismantle the oppressive machinery of the former oppressors will never succeed. Our revolution must dismantle the oppressive machinery of the apartheid regime. It's still intact and hard on our people. So, the last point on the legal question. We have also this morning just authorized the saving of documents, legal documents, to Minister Aaron Mutuale on two grounds. We want, firstly, we want to say we agree as the SACP and the Ani family with Comrade Aaron Mutueledi when he is re re restoring the citizenship of this criminal. Because without that citizenship, this man will live here and go. If the restitution order fails, he immediately leaves the country. We want him here to continue to serve his sentence. Parole is a continuation of a sentence. If he leaves, he will never serve the sentence. So, even if we can achieve just one week, him remaining in jail for us is victory. That's what we want to do. On that basis, we have further written to him so that he can clarify because his lawyers yesterday were in the media. They said to the media that he has never applied for the restoration of his citizenship. We sent him uh, the letter today asking the clarification on this matter that he has never applied. Of course, we have looked into many areas in which the minister could make that determination. But we support the determination in principle. But we felt that it should be within the framework of the law that such is done. On that basis, comrades, that's the legal framework. That's where we are now on the legal framework. But we are still having serious challenges because the right-wing forces have been emboldened by the decision of the Constitutional Court. They are arrogant. They don't respect even their colleagues in the legal fraternity. This is where we are as a revolution. Lastly, Comrade Panyaza, is to thank all of you, the Alliance Movement, for working together, our Progressive Youth Alliance, for working together. This is the unit of the movement that has delivered freedom in our country. We need back this unity. Without this unity, we will be defeated to achieve the objective we have set for ourselves. So we want to thank you very much for coming in your big numbers and for displaying this unit.